In this video, I'm going to specifically talk about the potential for a settlement between Ripple and the SEC. Recently, settlement talks have been all over Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and Reddit and TradingView and pretty much all over talking about how people think that there is a settlement incoming because of what just happened with the judge approving the sealing of documents that both the SEC and Ripple both requested. So I'm going to talk about why, in my personal opinion, I don't exactly think a settlement is coming. There's a bunch of reasons why, but at the same time, there's a bunch of good reasons why it could actually happen. So we're going to talk about settlement timing, trying to time this market, what would be the best case scenario for XRP to try to make that move with the rest of the crypto market for the end of the year or if it's going to miss out once again. We also heard from Rosie Rios, who is a member of the uh, Ripple executive team. She was formerly U.S. Treasurer. She took a shot at Bitcoin. I'm going to tell you what she actually tweeted out and what I have to think about that. And it just came out that the second largest Ethereum mining pool will be shutting down. So I'm going to tell you why it actually shut down. And of course, with all the speculation of the settlement, I'm going to talk about some price predictions that some people have for XRP for the end of the year, for the end of this market cycle. So here we go. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And right now we are covering the Ripple versus SEC case, as well as other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any of those topics interest you, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon, so YouTube will send you a notification when I release a new video. And I believe that people in the crypto space are some of the most generous people on the planet. So if you're feeling generous today, I'd really appreciate it if you do two things. Number one, smash the thumbs up button. And number two, watch this video all the way to the end. It, those two are really, truly the two best things you can do to support a YouTube channel. So if you do that, I'd really appreciate it. So here we go. So first, I'm going to talk about the tweet that Rosie Rios, who is now a member of the Ripple executive team, sent out earlier today. Now, Rosie Rios was formerly the U.S. Treasury Secretary, and she and she has her name on the $100 bill, or at least some of them. So I tweeted out today that you might want to listen to what this woman actually says. Well, it's kind of interesting because she sent out a tweet that basically pumped up XRP, which, of course, she's on the executive board. She's going to do that. But she also took a shot at Bitcoin. She said that XRP is more for payments, whereas Bitcoin is more speculative. That's, that's the kind of talk that you typically hear of people like Peter Schiff. And I don't think he's a fan of XRP either. And she reiterated the fact that XRP's uh, main use case, or at least currently one of its main use cases, is of course the cross-border payments. But her shot at Bitcoin being more about speculation is interesting because she's not exactly wrong, but at the same time, she said that the China ban on Bitcoin kind of brings that home. But here's the thing. China basically created a knockoff Bitcoin and then banned Bitcoin in its own country to use its own version of Bitcoin where they have total control of it. Seems like China's really good at making knockoff things. So it's my opinion that I think this space needs Bitcoin. It needs Bitcoin to succeed. And I think Bitcoin is a lot more than just speculation, especially considering how new all of crypto is. But in any case, if you want to get the Bitcoin maxis riled up at the XRP army, well, you just have to forward that tweet around. And also some news that I just saw earlier today is that Ethereum's second biggest mining pool is being shut down. Uh, it's actually located in China. Or excuse me. It's not being shut down. They're actually suspending operations because of a couple of things. Uh, number one, the Chinese ban on cryptocurrencies is just putting more and more pressure on the mining sector over there, whatever is left. But I find it really interesting that the Bitcoin miners seem to shut down a lot faster and try to move what they could overseas, whereas obviously one of these Ethereum mining pools, which is one of the largest in the world, didn't. However, what they did notice was that along with the increased pressure, that Ethereum 2.0 is being rolled out. And what they realized is that most of their Bitcoin mining machines are basically going to become obsolete. And so now we're going to roll into the talks of settlement between Ripple and the SEC. Now, there's been a lot of articles that I've read that are speculating that a settlement's coming down the pike. There's a lot of blog posts. There's a lot of uh, tweets going all over the place. YouTube videos galore saying a settlement incoming. And they're not exactly wrong, but for these reasons that I'm going to lay out here, I don't exactly think that that's going to happen. But of course, I have to put a disclaimer by saying I could be completely wrong. Now, here's why I, I don't exactly think it's going to be as easy as some people think to have this settlement. Because, because number one, Brad Garlinghouse just days ago said he is not interested in a settlement unless it meets one condition. Now, that one condition is going to put the SEC in a really, really, really tough spot. So what is that condition? Well, Brad said he will only accept a settlement offer if it comes with total and complete clarity of what XRP is on a go-forward basis. 
which means the SEC will have to admit that XRP is not currently a security and it is a decentralized utility token, which is essentially what it's always been, but it's always been designed for. But if the SEC does that, that will actually hinder them going after some of the uh, new cryptocurrency companies that they actually want to, not in all cases, but they could lose some leverage from that. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a precedent set because there's a settlement that really no side admits to any wrongdoing. But as I just sent out on Twitter earlier, I said that Ripple's defense team has, ju has done an absolutely masterful job in painting the SEC into a corner where it's basically a heads I win, tails you lose scenario. And so this is going to be a playbook, so to speak, for other cryptocurrency companies for when the SEC comes after them. Now, they might not necessarily get to claim fair defense because Ripple's been around for a long time, XRP's been around for a long time, but there was a lot of things that came out during this case that a lot of other cryptocurrencies are gonna be able to look at and see what are the weak points of what the SEC is doing, what are the strong points, what do they need to avoid, and so forth. And not only that, there are a lot of fragile egos at stake. So we typically think of that in the sports world, these high paid, these high paid athletes have very fragile egos. Well, guess what? A lot of people in government have a lot of very fragile egos. So the current head of the SEC, Gary Gensler, just watching some of the interviews, I believe that he might be one of them. And so looking at one of the interviews that he actually gave in 2018, that that video just surfaced days ago where somebody found it was basically him speaking to Congress believing that literally he said the XRP token is probably a security. Now, of course, he wasn't the head of the SEC at the time, and he said the word probably, but nonetheless, you can kind of see where his stance comes from. I find it hard to believe that he would flip-flop, especially with all the players on his side going so deep on giving Ethereum a free pass and putting this lawsuit on XRP. But as somebody on Twitter pointed out to me, well, they could actually settle with, with the SEC saying that XRP even though it was a security back then, it's not used as, it's not, its use case now is, is sufficient that it isn't classified as a security anymore. So what they could do is give Ripple a slap on the wrist uh, fine and let them move forward with the clarity that XRP is not now a security, even though it was back then, pay us 10, 20, $50 million, whatever it is, and we'll go our ways. And so I believe that that is a possibility. So now looking at some of the timing of all of this, we have to look at the rest of the market cycle. And if you want to play out the best case scenario for XRP, we need to look at the best case, we need to look at the market cycle and what could happen uh, in the coming months to Ripple in the SEC. So if you're looking for a settlement, you want that as early as humanly possible. You want that now. Because that, what that means is that XRP is going to, going to be able to enjoy the run-up that the rest of the crypto market looks like it's going to it looks like it's going to enjoy. At least that's what the on-chain data suggests. Now, if a settlement would actually happen in November when the rest of the market has already been going up, I think you'll see pretty much an instant correction and XRP would go to whatever price it's going to go to, even if it had settled, say, tomorrow. But if they don't settle or even if they do settle, or say Ripple wins, but they uh, they win in a summary judgment, but it had to go through trial and it didn't happen until mid-December or the end of December, and the rest of the crypto market may be booming by then. The rest of the bull run may be over by then. What's gonna happen to XRP is probably something similar to what happened last year when the rest of the market was going up and Ripple was slapped with a lawsuit from the SEC. It didn't hit all-time highs. In fact, right now it's about four times down from hitting all-time highs, but if you do get that clarity, you're going to get at least a 4x to hit its all-time high. And if Bitcoin is, of course, soaring well above its all-time high, XRP is going to be one of those that you're going to see 20 to 30x gains in this market cycle. Now, I'm going to tell you about a poll that I saw speaking of the lengthening market cycles. Speaking of the length of this market cycle, basically asked how long uh, do you think until it ends? And from their responses, it looked like 38% of people say it looks like Say they believe this market cycle, this market peak, is going to end in about three months, essentially the end of the year. But the interesting thing was 40% of respondents believe that it's going to take another six to nine months to reach this market cycle peak. Now, I've said probably closer to six months. I think it's going to go into Q1 of 2022, but some people feel it's going to go even longer than that. But the other segment, 22% said that this market cycle is over and we are headed into a bear market. So some of the technical analysts and fundamental analysts that I usually watch on a daily basis, Benjamin Cohen, uh, Willie Wu, uh, Will Clement, who is an on-chain analyst, uh, Lark Davis, blockchain backer, and a couple others. A lot of them, a lot of them seem to be on the same page in terms of interpreting the data 
saying that the end of this year is going to see something crazy. So let me know in the comment section below what you think the end of the year is actually going to do if XRP is going to enjoy a bull market, if it's actually going to get clarity. Also, don't forget to comment in the comment section down below. Do you think settlement is imminent or do you think this thing is going to go all the way to trial and if XRP is going to miss out on anything? So once again, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks for giving it a big thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.